This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. And sadly, today it is a wrap up on a World Juniors done too soon for Philip Broberg and Team Sweden. Oat done in the third period by a strong effort from the Finnish side. An injured captain, Philip Broberg, and the rest of the Swedish squad. Tuckered out, tired, and beat down from a tough tournament. Couldn't keep up with, well, what was a better Finnish squad at the end of the game. So, for that, we now turn to recapping and looking back at the tournament that was for Philip Broberg. And realistically, you don't have to do that. I'm going to tell you that right there. Yeah, Philip Broberg, he had a couple of points. And he looked good in that first game. Took a game off. And then let his team out there clutch moments even when the tying goal was scored whatever you want to say end of the day the tournament was what it was unfortunately for Philip Broberg because the guy never had a chance at the end of the day he never had a chance because from day one of games beginning on Boxing Day for Philip Broberg he was playing injured hurt whatever you want to say and I'm not making excuses here but for us as Oilers fans Ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in as a fan of another fan base and you think your prospect is better than Philip Broberg, great. You know what? Ele evaluated through the games, that's solid. But for us as Oilers fans, the concern is not Philip Broberg was hurt and had a subpar showing compared to what we were supposed to get out of him or that he failed compared to Vasily Podkolzin or anybody else that you want to compare him to around his draft year. Uh, maybe a Dylan Cousins out of... Uh, the situation there for Team Canada too. But for us as Oilers fans, what really sucks about this is now you've got a player that could potentially be out of action for some time. The plan, as far as I understand it, is still for Philip Broberg to fly home this evening or whenever Team Sweden packs up their stuff and gets on an airplane to Finland. But the problem now is simply what becomes of him in the rest of this season because because of now you've got Philip Broberg yes injured but he's got to make that trip back to Sweden and for us it is a complete unknown as to where Philip Broberg is actually hurting right we expect foot lower ankle kind of situation that's what we're expecting but unfortunately for Philip Broberg is this an injury that he played on so long Gave so much that at the end of the day, he's out of the lineup for Shaleftia for a while now. And I imagine Shaleftia is not going to want to throw in Philip Broberg. The way he looked the last couple of games in the tournament, the hit he took against, I believe, the USA, anything and everything you want to throw at him to say he's injured. The problem is the coach did admit he was playing hurt. And the problem for Shaleftia, you're not going to insert that into your lineup and put him on the top pair. I'm sorry, that's not the way it works in professional sports. When you get a guy back who's injured, you don't go out there and shuttle him into top tier minutes right away. Even the Oilers last season to start the year, Connor McDavid didn't quite get the minutes. He got mid-year and late end of last year. So, right Let's look at it this way, is this is cause for concern on an Edmonton Oilers front. Not only because, yes, we saw a subpar tournament out of Philip Broberg, but the underlying reason he's injured somewhere to the fact that it impacts his ability to A, be a great skater, B, shoot the puck well, C, play defense that we were expecting him to actually finally play in this tournament. We did not get to see a chance of great Philip Broberg defense because the guy wasn't mobile enough to deliver great Philip Broberg defense and that is another concern is now you have for Oilers fans after what was supposed to be a step forward in Philip Broberg's development not necessarily in his career but in front of our eyes it is instead a step back because now not only do you see Philip Broberg put up a subpar performance due to injury, but now you wonder how long, once he gets back to Shaleftia, will he be out of action before we once again see our prized 8th overall pick from the 2019 NHL Draft get back into action. And that is the hard question we have to ask ourselves this evening. If you haven't already asked it, Perhaps the most heartbreaking part of the tournament was watching Philip Broberg's post-game interview 
tears running down his cheeks, just absolutely devastated that he wasn't able to deliver the performance his team needed. And of course, his country comes up short against the rival Finland club. So now, ladies and gentlemen, right? It's simple is now we're on full watch. What we might have expected to sit here and see, maybe Philip Roberg sneaks into Oilers camp. That is a foregone almost conclusion in my mind that he will not be at camp at all. And he will indeed be going back to Schleftia and not to Schleftia to play hockey, but more than likely just to heal up for the time being. And I mean, it could be a minor issue that was nagging him, but that's great. You can't sit there and have those minor issues nag you all season. You can't be Philip Bro- or uh, sorry, Oscar Clefbaum and expect it to get better. You have to at least sometimes take some time off. And of course, whenever you do that, it does sink things. And from an Edmonton Oilers perspective, it sinks our ability to watch Philip Broberg continue to develop his NHL game over in the SHL in Sweden. So for us, that really very much so does suck because after that subpar tournament performance, you'd love to see him go tear up the SHL. But I'd say at best, based on what I've seen of Broberg moving out there and trying to make plays, trying to do anything, he looks like a man who is very, very far from being fully healed. And I mean very far in the NHL. That's two months, or not two months, two weeks, right? Two weeks is a long time, and especially this year in the NHL it will be. And in the SHL, as the season winds down, two weeks is going to be very important because do not forget the SHL season will finish up before the NHL season does, and we still have high hopes that we will see Philip Broberg in the Oilers lineup at some point this year. If not, he'll be in the lineup with the Bakersfield Condors to help them with hopefully a playoff run. So, end of the day, this really dang well sucks. That's about all I can put it that way is it really is tough to watch Philip Roberg out there just absolutely beat up, banged up, bruised up, whatever you want to say, and not deliver the tournament performance we wanted him to and instead end up leaving injured, head hung low, and, well, you know what, nothing the better to show for it. Maybe that's perhaps the worst part is there is nothing we gained from watching Philip Broberg play in this tournament. It's not even the fact that it was a subpar performance due to injury is you cannot get anything to read off of Philip Broberg out of this tournament with the injury accounted for and that really friggin sucks for us as Oilers fans because well this was supposed to be it right we were supposed to see how much that men's game has transformed Broberg this season and unfortunately Instead, it's just more question marks than answers moving forward here into the next couple of weeks as the NHL season gets underway. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson. This is Stolony TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to this evening's edition, wrapping up Philip Broberg and the cause for concern as we move forward into the rest of the NHL and SHL seasons. I am going to catch you. In the next video, I promise you, probably tomorrow morning when we get the Oilers training camp roster released because we still do not have that officially announced by our Edmonton Oilers team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm up on over here.